Good morning. This is Nadine Ali Awaude. Today, I'm going to discuss with you a very interesting topic, which is beware of superbugs. And this is a text suitable for students from 11th and 12th grade who are willing to take module G. So are you ready? Let's start. So today we are aiming to check if you are if you do understand a report. If you do understand text that consists of bands two and three vocabulary in general, and in particular, we need to check if you understand a report, if you can scan a report for specific information, and if you can track causes and effects in a report. If you can till the moment, it's okay. We can practice it now and today. And if you can, this is great. Now we can practice more and more. So let's start our lesson for today. Before we go to our text, vocabulary and etc., let's have a, let's take a look at the six pictures here. Try to guess what they represent. Okay, let's check together. I left the first one till the end because it's a little bit strange. So let's start with the second uh, photo. Here we have antibiotics. I'm surely we in general know them. The medicine we usually take when we have some infections. Here, where can we see these? At clinics, at hospitals, which are sterilization and sterilization equipments. And then if we look at the fourth picture here, we can see a doctor and a patient. And if you need to take antibiotics or other medicine, you need to have a prescription. And when we are usually sick, we need to go to hospitals and healthcare centers. And what about the first photo? Did you guess? It is a photo of something called superbugs. If you are not familiar with superbugs, today we are going to introduce you to this thing and uh, superbugs will be our topic for today's lesson. Let's move on. First of all, we have some vocab we are going to find in our text. So let's start by reading them, looking at them, and then have some exercises to practice them. We have the word deadly, like coronavirus is a deadly disease. So deadly is something that causes death. And then we have the implications of something. For example, you take a decision and consequently you have some implications uh, uh, as a result of this uh, decision you take. We have infect and infection. This is a term we hear so often nowadays. He is infected by coronavirus. He got the virus and we want to uh, try to eliminate the infection around people. That's why we stay home. So infect is the verb and infection is the noun. Intend, I aim, I want. I intend to do something. I aim to do something. And then invade, like to spread widely, like the coronavirus. We say coronavirus invaded the whole world, which means it spread it all over the world. Isolate, to, uh, uh, like to be alone, to isolate something, to keep it alone. To, uh, like now we are doing with people who have uh, the virus, we try to isolate them as not to infect the others. Can we go on? Let's move. We have prescribed, the doctor prescribes medicine for you. Produce, we produce, uh, like we have factories that produce um, different types of things. So 
This is the word produce. We have reality, the real life, reality. Resistance and resistance. We need resistance against an uh, illness or against a virus. For example, uh, lucky people are those who have uh, resistance against coronavirus. They are, their bodies are resistant uh, against coronavirus. And then we have restrict. For example, now the government restricts uh, the uh, movement of people. Uh, there are some restrictions. There are uh, some, uh, you know, laws that forbid uh, the people from going uh, outside and uh, moving and etc. of these things. And then we have solution. We need, hopefully, a solution for the problem, a way out. And we have two more words, sterilize, like when we now are using hygiene and et cetera of these things, to make it clean, uh, free of viruses, free of bacteria. And the last uh, word is treat. The doctor, for example, treats the patient. It's like a cure and et cetera of these things. So now are you ready for some exercises uh, dealing with these uh, words? Let's see. Here we have a very simple exercise. You have eight sentences, and you need to uh, select the suitable word that goes with each sentence. For example, I will give you an example, the first sentence, and then I'll give you time to do them, and then we'll do them together. The first sentence says, have you found a resistance or solution to the problem what is suitable for this sentence? Usually we find a solution, solution for, to the problem, not a resistance. So here we have the correct answer is solution. So take a minute and try to do like, we intend or prescribe to go to the party. Don't touch that cut with dirty hands or you will eat. This movie is to adults, to uh, people over 18 years old. This, these research will have important scientific implications or infections. Uh, be careful picking mushrooms in the uh, forest. Why? Because some are resistant or deadly. And now I don't know if you watch Big Brother, it is a what? It is a solution or reality TV show and dentists, doctors for your teeth must produce or sterilize the equipment. Just take a minute and then we'll do them together. Ready? Let's move on. We intend to go to the party. We don't prescribe to go to a party. We intend, we aim, we wish. So here, intend is the correct answer. Number three, you don't touch the cut with dirty hands because uh, you don't want to infect it to get some uh, viruses or bacteria into it. So infect here the uh, correct answer, not produce. This movie is not isolated. It is restricted to adults, which means that only adults can watch it, not children. So here, restricted. It's not open to everyone. This research will have Important scientific infections? No, we don't have scientific infections. We have implications, consequences. Be careful picking mushrooms in the forest. Why? Because some are not resistant, some are deadly. They may cause you death. So here we have deadly. And Big Brother is a solution TV show. No, it is a reality TV show. It is like from real life, the daily life of some uh, youngsters like you. And then dentists must sterilize their equipment. They must keep them always clean and free of viruses and bacteria. I hope you found this uh, exercise easy so we can move on. And if you look here, you can find the answers and we've done it 
right and correct. So let's go on. So now we have another simple exercise where you have five of the words learned. You need to complete here the sentences using the words in uh, the box. Okay, so fill in the blanks, use words from the box. You can use the word prescription. You can use the word isolate, isolation, production, and invaded. If you see here, we use the, uh, not the same terms exactly, but from the same family here, okay? Here we have the first sentence. The company has increased its what? By 10%. Then we have the second. The doctor gave me a what for the infection? We have the third. It is necessary to patients with corona and keep them in what for two weeks? And the fourth one is coronavirus has the whole world. Uh, take a minute and then we'll go on. Ready? Let's see. Here we have the company. Company usually increase, companies in general, usually increase their what? Their production. So production here is the word used. So here we have production. They increase their production. So the company has increased its production by 10%. So now we need something related to doctors, infection, and etc. of these things. So here we have the doctor gave me what? He gave me a per prescription. Yes, he gave me a prescription so I can get the medicine. So here we use the term and the word prescription. And then, if you, if you notice here we use uh, in the first sentence, we use noun because it's is accompanied by a noun. And then in the second sentence as well, we used a noun because we have a. Here we have it's. So a prescription. So now in the, four, in the third uh, sentence, we have it is necessary. And then we have the two. Usually... Oh, not usually even. Always we use two here. After two, we need a verb. It is necessary to. So here we need a verb. Patients with corona and keep, keep them in. In, we need a noun. So here we have two terms to work with. Isolate and isolation. So here the verb goes here. After two, it is necessary to isolate patients with corona and keep them in isolation. Here we use the noun, okay? So then we have the fourth one. So here we have one term and word left, which is invaded. And it goes with the fourth sentence, which is coronavirus has invaded has spread all over the world. Okay. Sorry, just a minute. So here, if we uh, look at the uh, next slide, we can see that our Answers are correct. The company has increased uh, its production by 10%. The doctor gave me a prescription for the infection. It is necessary to isolate patients with corona and keep them in isolation for two weeks. And finally, coronavirus has invaded the whole world. So we can move on, right? So now we have a very exciting uh, Exercise where we need to match here verbs from column A and expressions and terms and words from column B 
to come out with expressions that are connected to help. We have here eight verbs like have, lose, feel, call, take, treat, catch, and give. And then we have uh, the terms and words that can go with these verbs. Let's see when we say here, for example, um, an operation, surgery, an x-ray. Have an operation, lose, feel, call, take, treat, catch, or give. What do you think? Yes, we have an operation, we have a surgery, and we have an x-ray. So it's number one. So I'll give you like uh, some time to look at them and try to match so we can then have our final uh, terms and expressions. Okay, let's go on together. What do we usually lose? What do we usually lose? Yes, we lose some sleep, we lose some weight, and your voice. What do we usually feel? We feel faint, dizzy, sick, and ill. What do we call? We call an ambulance, we and we call the doctor. What do we take? We take an injection or a prescription, yes. And we can have here, no, sorry, here uh, there's something else. Uh, we take here pulse, medicine, a pill, and temperature. It's more suitable. And then we have here treat a patient. We treat an injury, and we treat a disease. And then we have, we catch a cold, we catch the flu, and we catch a disease. And finally, a doctor gives an in, uh, injection uh, to the patient or a prescription. So here, if you look, we have the expressions ready and clear. You can go over them again. Now we are going to watch a very short movie related to our lesson, which is Super Bugs. Enjoy. While you are watching, try to find answers uh, to these questions. What is the problem discussed in the video? What are the causes of this problem? And how can we help solve this problem? Enjoy watching the video. Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. Let's talk about antibiotics. Usually when you get some type of bacterial infection like strep throat or pneumonia, you go to the doctor, get some antibiotics, and you are all good to go. But this may be changing sometime in the relatively near future. That's because some bacterial infections are becoming resistant to these drugs. They are called superbugs. But let me tell you, I'd much rather have some superhero insects in place of these. At least that spider dude saves people. See, every year about 2 million people get sick from a superbug, and about 23,000 of them die in the U.S. alone. So, yeah, that's not so super. And to make it even worse, any strain of bacteria is able to turn into a superbug. One of the best known examples of these is the Clostridium difficile bacteria, or C. diff for short. These bacteria live in your intestines. However, the other good bacteria in there as well helps keep you from getting sick. But if you have been taking antibiotics, the drug may have killed some of the good bacteria, allowing for C. diff to take control. And once this happens, it can cause life-threatening diarrhea, and you may even have to get part of your intestines removed, but we're not going to show any of that. And that's not even the worst one. A family of bacteria called CRE has been linked to be resistant to almost all known antibiotics. In fact, it is so serious that the Center for Disease Control and Prevention is calling this one of the most urgent public health threats that we currently have. But how does this even happen anyway? What's causing these bacteria to become resistant to different types of antibiotics? Well, these bacteria aren't 
getting swole at the gym pumping iron, but like any other living creature, they are evolving. And sometimes mutations in their genomes can cause them to become resistant to certain antibiotics. But also, a much more terrifying explanation has to do with plasmids, which are parts of the bacterial DNA. The plasmid enters and multiplies itself within a cell and can then be transferred to others. So essentially, these plasmids are the vehicles that transfer genes for antibiotic resistance between different bacterial species. Or in plain English, plasmids are part of the reason that one day, antibiotics may not be able to help your strep throat anymore. <coughs> Oh no. The bad news is that the more antibiotics you've taken, the higher your risk. And also, the more times you're in the hospital, the higher your risk. Now, you should absolutely still go to the doctor and take antibiotics if you need to, but the point is that you shouldn't take them unnecessarily. And also, to be safe, you should always wash your hands thoroughly after using the bathroom or preparing food. It looks like the medical industry is in need for some alternate ways to treat bacteria infections, because otherwise they may eventually run out of antibiotics that actually work. I know this might seem scary, but maybe it could be a motivator. Go humans! You got a lot of surviving to do. So what do you think of all this? Or tell us what we should talk about next. Let me know in the comments below. As always, I'm Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to Let's talk about antibiotics. Okay, so the problem discussed in the video was super bugs which are resistant to and antibiotics. The causes of this problem are basically is taking too much or too many antibiotics when not needed and we can help this and we can help solve this problem by taking antibi antibiotics only when needed and trying to keep our hands clean, the uh, surrounding area a clean and etc. of these ways of uh, keeping uh, ourselves and others safe and clean. Now we are going uh, on a break and after the break we'll start discussing our text. 10 minutes break.
antibiotics. Usually when you get some type of bacterial infection, Okay, we're back. Before the break, we watched a video that discussed the problem of superbugs that is caused by antibiotics and is a serious problem around the world. And that it can be a little uh, bit, uh, you know, solved or prevented by taking less antibiotics and by keeping clean. So now we are going to discuss a text uh, uh, on the same topic and we are going to learn some techniques to deal with module G texts. The first technique we need to do, deal with is scanning. It is a way of reading. So here we have the scanning skill and we need to know how to scan a report because the thing we are going to read today is a report. So usually when you scan, we have scanning and skimming. When we scan, we look for specific piece of information. So when you look or when you scan a report, you look at it quickly to find specific information. And you can make use of eye catchers. There are many eye catchers that will help you, such as, first, you have numbers. For example, when they ask you about a day, date, you usually look for numbers. When they ask you about people, you can make use of capital letters because usually uh, names of people are capitalized. And then you can make use of words in italics. For example, when they ask you for a name of a journal, a magazine, etc., these names are usually uh, italized. And then we have words in bold is another thing to make use of. And we have the quotation marks. So those are all clues and eye catchers that you can use to make your life easier and to find the information you need quickly. So now we are going to read the first paragraph of the report and I need you to scan quickly before we go and discuss the paragraph, the name of a newspaper here in the paragraph. And then we have the superbug infected hospitals, hospital patients. You need to find a number. And then the superbug infection caused the death of how many people? So basically, you are going to look for a name and two numbers, okay, quickly. I'm just going to display the uh, paragraph and then we'll go back. Really, really quickly. One, two, and three. Let's see. The name of a newspaper here, Washington Post. How did you know? First, you needed to look for something capitalized because it is a name of a newspaper. So here, Washington Post, and then we have the superbug infected. You looked for a number, 17 hospital patients, and then the superbug infection caused the death of seven people. Now, we are going to read together the paragraph, and then I will uh, tell you how we found these things. So, the headline of Washington Post read, Superbug claims seventh victim. So here we have the seventh victim. The article reported that 17 hospital patients 
were infected with deadly bacteria which were resistant to drugs. So here the number 17, yes, it goes back to the number of patients uh, who were infected with deadly bacteria which were resistant to drugs. Even though the victims were isolated from other patients and treated with antibiotics, not everyone survived. So the number of infected people is 17 and the number of death, seven. So the, the people who died are seven. This article reflects a new and shocking reality. Powerful bacteria called superbugs are invading our world and they are indestructible. Here is a very important word. So what we do here is, so we know now we are talking about a newspaper that published an article and this article it uh, said that we have seven victims, seven people who are dead now because of uh, superbugs and then we have that 17 hospital patients and then we are introduced to the bacteria which is called superbugs and we have a word I'm sure most of you don't know which is indestructible so it is very important to check it out and then you will see that it is hard to control. Why this is important? Because now when we are going to check the questions, we'll find that we need to know the meaning of this term. This is we, we've done, the name of the newspaper, the number of infected uh, people, and the number of people who were killed by this bacteria. So now we have a question. Here, what do we learn about superbugs? And you need to tick two correct answers. And usually, you have to keep in mind two things. The first thing is that you need to choose only two. Three, the three sentences or the three answers are considered wrong then. So here, we have to choose only two. We need to read all the statements before we decide on the correct statements. And we need to cross out the statements that we feel that are totally incorrect. And we need to make sure we know the meaning of the statements. Otherwise, we can't answer the question. Another thing to keep in mind is that Usually not the same words of the uh, text are found in the uh, statements, but similar words. So basically, vocabulary is very important here. Okay, what do we know about uh, superbugs? They are very infectious. We have here a great possibility that this is a correct answer. They must be treated with antibiotics we are told that they are resistant to antibiotics. Recently, they killed 17 people in that hospital. They are impossible to eliminate, and this is what we discussed there, the term, okay? All patients were infected with the bacteria. All the patients at the hospital were infected. No, we knew that only 17 patients. They are invading certain hospitals we, we haven't been told so. We have been told about two things. Recently, they killed 17 people? No, they killed only seven. So this is very important to keep in mind. The, here, there is a trick. We know the number 17. If you go back and scan, you find that 17 is the number for people infected, not for people who uh, got uh, uh, death and are dead now. So this is not an option. Here is one option. They are impossible to eliminate. 
and they are very infectious. They are inviting certain hospitals and all of these things are a bit far away from being correct. So if we check, yes, they are very infectious and they are impossible to eliminate. Okay, here we had two tricks, the number and the word. We didn't have the same word, but we have the meaning of the term of the word found in the text. Can we move on? The second paragraph. We have the widespread misuse of antibiotics since its discovery in 1945 is the main cause of the superbug invasion. So here we are discussing the cause of the problem. So usually, if you know, we have what we call a topic sentence which is the first sentence in a paragraph and usually the main idea is found, usually is found in this sentence. So here we know that the paragraph is discussing the cause of the widespread of superbug and the superbug invasion. Antibiotics, which were originally intended to treat bacterial infections, have been used for viral infections. So here we have two types of infections, bacterial, which are caused by bacteria, and we have viral, which are caused by viruses. Okay, so antibiotics were created to treat bacterial infections, but then were misused and have been used for viral infections. So the result was some antibiotics can easily be, uh, why they are misused here? Because some anti antibiotics can easily be bought over the counter. This is the first thing. Others are prescribed by doctors who succumb to pressure from patients. Usually patients keep nagging till the doctors prescribe antibiotics for them. So this is very important to keep in mind. So let's move on. So here, another thing to scan, antibiotics were first discovered in, we quickly go back to the paragraph and look for a number. So here we have the number and then we check the sentence. We said, yes, since it's discovery, so it makes sense. So the answer is, 1945. So now we have a very important question. We have a multiple choice question. As we mentioned earlier, we need to cross out far answers, incorrect answers, and then we need to decide on the most suitable answer. Here we have in the first paragraph connection between paragraphs. In the first paragraph, the writer describes a problem, which is the superbug invasion. In the second paragraph, the one we've just read, the writer does what? Does he express an opinion about his problem, provide solutions to the problem, gives background to the problem, and compares the problem to other problems? Let's see. Have we read anything about opinion? No. Do we have a solution now? Not at all. Has the writer mentioned any other problems and compared the problem of superfactor? Not at all. So here we have the background. Okay? The history of the superbug invasion gives background to the problem, so we are correct. Can we move on? Let's move on. So here, we have another very important thing to learn to be able to answer Module G uh, tests. We have something called paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is expressing the meaning of something written or spoken using different words. 
especially to achieve clearer, uh, uh, greater clarity. Here we have the question on the exam. Usually, or often, paraphrases the words in the text. Okay? So usually, the question paraphrases words from the text and doesn't use the same word from the uh, text. And that's what we just discussed, that they use similar terms and words. Here we have example of a paraphrasing question. Okay? Here we have... Uh, what was the initial purpose of antibiotics? Okay? What was the initial purpose of antibiotics? We have here to find the answer. We need to look for a phrase that has the same meaning as initial purpose. So here, they were originally. So the word originally is uh, the key and the clue. So they were originally intended to treat bacterial infections. Number three, the paragraph here, the implications. We are going to talk about the implications of this misuse or cause for concern. Why? The first is that antibiotics only work against bacterial infections and are effective are, um, and are ineffective in the case of viral infections. The second and more serious implication is that when a patient regularly takes an antibiotic for a viral infection, such as a sore throat, his or her body builds up a resistance. Now, your, your body and the bacteria can fight antibiotics, which means the antibiotic will have little effect against a superbug in the future. So we have two implications of the misuse of antibiotics. The first one here that they only work against bacteria, so they are ineffective in the case of viral infections. And the second one is the resistance our body is built. Okay? So we need to be careful. Here we have a cause and effect question. When you are asked to complete a sequence of cause and effect, you need to look for words in the text such as cause, as a result, consequences, implications, effects. Those are terms and connectors that are important to keep in mind when you need to answer uh, these kinds of questions. Here is the example. What is the effect of the widespread misuse of antibiotics? We need to complete the sequence of cause and effects. The first one is given. Antibiotics work only against bacterial infections. However, they are being used, yes, to treat viral infections. So the body builds up resistance to antibiotics. This means antibiotics are no longer. So here you have no, so you can't say ineffective. So they are no longer effective. And this is something very important to keep in mind because here the sentence in a negative form, so the word shall be now used in the positive one, effective, ineffective. Okay, so these are the answers. The last paragraph here. Today, experts are looking for solutions to superbugs. The most immediate problem is to stop their spread. Therefore, the first thing, strict rules of hygiene, such as washing hands and sterilizing equipment are enforced in hospitals and health clinics. The other attempt, here we have the first, 
And then we have the other attempt is to fight uh, superbugs. The use of antibiotics in some countries is now restricted by law. You can't use it freely. For example, we have the Netherlands. Antibiotics are rarely prescribed. The result of this, this has resulted in a very low incidence of infections due to superbugs. So here we have a paragraph that discusses solutions to the problem. The first solution is strict rules of hygiene. The second solution is also a strict use of antibiotics. Okay, and we have the Netherlands is given as an example. One last question here. You need to scan the last paragraph of the report and fill in the blank. One country that restricts the use of anti antibiotics is, very simple, the Netherlands. So here why it is given. The Netherlands is uh, described as country which restricts the use of antibi antibiotics. What are the results of this action? Yes, they have few incidents here. There is a very low incidence of superbugs due to infections in the Netherlands. And so now we are finishing our lesson and we suppose that now you can understand text that consists of bands two and three, understand a report, scan a report for specific information, track causes and effects in a report. Talking about diseases, talking about viruses, bacteria, and superbugs, I wish you all health and safety. Keep healthy, keep safe, stay home till we can find a solution out of this situation. Have a nice day.